In my talk at the um, symposium today, I um, used a lot of examples from the Blue Ribbon Task Force report on economically sustainable digital preservation. That was a task force that met over two years. It was a joint task force composed of US and UK members, and we were tasked by the funders, mainly the National Science Foundation in the US, in trying to identify what criteria needed to be in place in order to be sure that digital preservation was sustainable, affordable, and would deliver the results that funders expected. So the task force was compiled both of uh, librarians and um, economists because we wanted to take an economically sound view of the question. The criteria that we identified were really quite wide-ranging and, and, and top-level in terms of the um, aspects of the problem that we investigated. There have to be incentives for people to digitally uh, preserve. Um, it won't just happen um, um, without anyone um, knowing what the benefits are. So for a producer to digitally preserve material, there needs to be an incentive for them to take that action because there clearly is a cost involved in that. Uh, another criterion that needs to be uh, in place is that um, a, a sound funding basis needs to be identified because um, costs will last over many years, they won't all be incurred in year one, and so for economically sustainable digital preservation to be in place you need um, a firm funding basis and you need to be clear why you're doing it and who is responsible for doing it. Digital preservation is part of a wider uh, European information landscape where the researcher or user sits in the centre of that landscape and then they will want to have access where they are to a whole range of resources, to web resources, to commercially subscribed resources, to uh, freely available resources all over the internet. It's not a question of going to a physical place like a library and looking at physical material or even using um, internet access from a, a library space. Um, what's important in the European landscape, information landscape of today is that it's the user who sits at the centre. Libraries are part of that landscape, but there are a great uh, many other players who are also involved. And for the user, it actually doesn't matter where the content is. It could be in a library, it could be on a, a server from a, a research funder, it could be from a, a, a private server put up by an interested individual or a, a learned society. For the end user, in a sense, it doesn't really matter because they are at the centre of the landscape and they want the access to re the resources where they, the researcher, are. That could be in a library, but it very often isn't in a library. It would be through a search interface like Google or Wikipedia. So both these elements, the information landscape in Europe and digital preservation, are building blocks in what Europe requires in order to create a, a digital Europe which the user can use.